Lieutenant John Winters, your host on this gangbuster case. It's a most unusual story about Gerard Graham Dennis. He was a Canadian by birth and began his career as a housebreaker and jewel thief when he was 16 years old in Montreal and Toronto. In just a moment, we'll tell you more about it. Dennis trained hard for his chosen profession. When he was operating in Westchester County, New York, where most of his crimes were committed, he worked out and practiced almost every day to become a skilled athlete. In the method of operation he used, much of his success depended on being able to perform physical feats impossible to most homebreakers. Dennis's favorite time for a robbery was when the family was at dinner or giving a party. His charm and ability to mix in society was a big asset. Casing a house, he could be affable with the guests and hosts, learning where the guests' clothing and valuables were stored. So as not to be recognized in entering such a room from the inside, Dennis slipped out and put his gymnastics to the test. Cat-like, he climbed a trellis or cornice. Quickly, yet cautiously and silently, he tightrope to lattice work. Hosts and guests usually were not aware of the prowling and thieving overhead. Dennis used his head as well as his muscles. Jumped or swung Tarzan-like to a balcony to reach his objective. His skill and training were backed up by a fearlessness and brazenness unusual among housebreakers who are generally sneak thieves, nothing more. Oh, come in. How's the party going? What? Who are you? I'm Bill Williams. How are you, Mrs. Uh... Are you a guest here? Oh, sure, sure. What'd you think I was, a crasher? No, no, of course not. But I just don't remember seeing you. Well, that certainly doesn't flatter me very much. I, uh, I remember you. Oh, I forgot a cigarette case. Sent me up to find it. It isn't in here, though. Why don't you try a coat? That's a good idea. See you downstairs. You bet. Dennis prided himself on his ease in carrying off any situation. He felt he could have been an actor, a great one. Because he was clever, Dennis seldom had to resort to violence during his many profitable robberies in Westchester County. Not that he didn't take precautions. But this night, he tried to push his luck. Close the door. Come in, put up your hands. Give me that gun. Stand back, I'm warning you. Young man, I know enough about psychology to know that you don't want to go to the chair. With my house full of guests, you haven't a chance. Now, give me that gun. The man was right. Dennis purposely aimed at the arm. He was too smart to gamble on a murder rap. Besides, he had every confidence in his ability to get away, again using his muscular coordination to retrace his path. Altogether, Dennis got about $150,000 worth of loot in Westchester County. Dennis was different sharper than other criminals. He had a set of jeweler's tools, and he learned how to use the delicate instruments. When he finished with his craftsmanship, he had unset cut diamonds ready for sale. Honey, 
I ought to get almost $10,000 for the stuff I got last night. Why don't you quit while you're ahead, Jerry boy? Quit? Why should I? I'll tell you why. Because we got nice neighbors. They're respectable people and they like us. They think we're like them. All the kids think you're the greatest. But I die every time there's a knock on the door. I'm sick of this life. Yeah, I'm doing all right. I'll never quit. Sure, sure, Mr. Big. Someday the law will catch up with you. It always does. Look, Susan, I got this thing worked down to a science. Look, I trained myself to use jeweler tools. Taught myself all there is to know about gems. I have almost become an expert. And now, when I'm really rolling, you talk about quitting. Well, maybe I'd better lay low around here for a while, though. I, uh, think I'll go on a selling trip. It's getting rid of the stuff that one day's going to ruin you. Not the way I operate. Oh, if anything ruins me, it's going to be your coffee. Diamond salesman Dennis's territory included Cleveland. He was not a stranger in that bustling Ohio city. Both he and his diamonds had been taken at their face value by one of Cleveland's biggest gem buyers. In Cleveland, Dennis was known as Harold Multone. He had business cards to prove it. How's business? Pretty good. Well, I'll tell you what, Hal. If your line of merchandise is good, we'll do business. It sounds fairly priced. Yeah, I try to be fair. In our business, your clients have to have faith in it. Mm -hmm. Faith I have. I also have a lens. Let's see what you have. Because of his assured manner and good appearance, no one ever suspected Dennis wasn't a genuine salesman. And in this way, he got the full trade value of much of the jewelry he had stolen. But he couldn't work that racket too often, so he had to devise other methods of getting rid of the stuff. That necklace is a lovely piece. It's all right, I guess. I bet he's asking 3,000 for it. That's about it. How do you happen to know so much about jewelry? Diamonds are my business. Oh. How about you? They're a hobby with me. I love fine stones. So maybe there's a way you, uh, you can put your hobby to work for you. How do you mean? There's a lot of money in hobbies sometimes. So? Look, uh, I've got an idea. I hope you won't think me too presumptuous, but uh, would you let me buy you a big, thick, juicy steak? I'd like to tell you all about it. Thanks, just the same. Oh, wait a minute, please. You see, I'm in business for myself. It's impossible for me to take care of any more territory than I do. I need help. Well, I... I have had sales experience. Fine. And what you don't know, I'll teach you. We'll run down to Philadelphia, see how the market is there. I'll uh, pay 10% on everything you sell. Oh, I don't know. I... Would you go with me on the first couple of calls, just to let me get off to a good start? Sure thing. We'll drive down in my car Monday morning. Is that a deal? All right. Good. Now, how about that big, thick, juicy steak, huh? <laughs> Fine. I thought you'd forgotten all about that. <laughs> Dennis's real reason for trying to recruit this girl was to see just how far he could go in passing hot stuff without breaking it up and selling the loose stones. Well, let's see if I have this straight. You said that this one goes for... Uh, 25000 25. And... I will try to push this one. You want to sell this one in Pittsburgh? Yes, I won't try to sell it here now, but if you can get the 50000 for these, great, you know. Well, now, you're going to throw in a few things as we go along, huh? Well, let's go. Wait a minute, Julie. You may as well try this on your own. I'll wait here for you. But I thought you were going to go with me on the first couple of calls. You don't need any help. I have a feeling you'll do much better by yourself. Well, I'll try it. Wish me luck? Good luck, Julie. Thanks. Dennis boldly parked near the jewelry store, his idea being to watch it. If she got into any trouble, he'd know about it. He didn't have long to wait. Uh, 
Not more than 15 or 20 minutes later, a man who anyone could see was a detective went into the store. Obviously, the jeweler had become suspicious and had notified the police. Dennis had found out what he wanted to know. The stuff was too hot for him to try to sell without breaking it up. Dennis decided to try his luck west. He left a portion of his stolen goods behind, not wanting to carry $100,000 worth of jewelry around with him at one time. He might have been wary of thieves. Dennis boarded one of the cracked trains for Los Angeles. Apparently carefree, he enjoyed all the comforts and companionship of the club car. He took in all the rugged beauty of the western country. Dennis first looked over Hollywood as a base of operations. He decided Beverly Hills had more prosperous citizens and prospects for greater profits. He took up residence in a fashionable and expensive hotel. Proud of his athletic ability and his physique, Dennis early showed up at the swimming pool. It would serve to keep him in condition, and the scenery was enhanced with beautiful girls, certain to find Dennis attractive. He didn't wait long. but uh, I'm interested in movie stars, too. Well, I guess it's all right. Hey, you sound like a Canadian. I should. I am one. Uh, what do you know? So am I. Really? Where from? Toronto. And you? Hamilton. You don't sound much like a Canadian. Well, I've been away for a long time. Are uh, you just here on a visit? Sort of. If I like it, I plan to stay. Uh-huh. Well, if I have my way, you'll like it. Come on, I want to see if you look as pretty underwater. Oh, no! My hair will get all wet. Her name was Hazel. She was a nice girl. Naturally, she didn't know what kind of a racket Dennis was in. In Hollywood vernacular, they became a pair. Both strangers to the coast, they took the full tour. They saw Muscle Beach, the Brown Derbies, major movie studios like RKO, television and radio stations, and the old missions. They went to Grauman's Chinese Theater and matched their footprints with those of the stars. There was boat racing at Long Beach and surfboard riding. There were days on the beaches and the much publicized streets of Hollywood. At night, Dennis and Hazel visited the nightclubs that laced the famous Sunset Strip, joining movie and TV stars and just the plain spending rich. As they held hands or danced, Dennis and Hazel became seriously interested in each other. At least Hazel took Dennis's fervent promises seriously. Dennis also worked at his profession. It could be that the tabs he paid at the clubs made working a real necessity. Dennis used the same methods that had proved successful in Westchester. He visited the homes of the rich and the famous, mixing as casually as any invited guest. Dennis scouted the rooms and their contents thoroughly, but did not forget his ingratiating manners. Being a Hollywood personality like Arthur Lake, Dennis always made a point of introducing himself, expressing admiration and being friendly. It was later that items of value were discovered stolen.
While Dennis was enjoying himself on the West Coast, his wife nervously waited. One day, it came, that knock on the door. Yes. Is it Dennis? Yes, I am. Is your husband home? Why, no, he's... A, he's away. What's wrong? He's wanted for questioning, Mrs. Dennis, in regard to some jewel thefts. You... You mean to tell me you think my husband is... is mixed up in a theft? We have reason to believe that he's responsible for a long series of burglaries in Westchester County. Why, that's impossible. It couldn't be. I have a warrant here to search the apartment. Dennis, not aware of what had happened in Westchester, had no worry except that Hazel was talking about marriage. He decided it was an opportune time to go on a business trip. He told Hazel she could use his apartment while he was away. Oh, hi. Well, here I am, darling. I, uh, fixed up some eggs. Coffee's probably hot now. Just put the bags anywhere. Will this closet be all right here? Oh, no, that's, uh, that's just for my, uh, personal stuff. It was sweet of you to let me use your apartment, but oh, I do wish you didn't have to go away. Well, uh... You want to get married, don't you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't get a divorce unless I go east for it. You know that. I know. I do hope there won't be any trouble. Trouble? What trouble can there be? I don't know. Darling, it's just that, well, I love you so much. Tell me everything's going to be all right. Honey, with me, everything's always all right. Everything wasn't all right with Dennis, but he didn't know it as he went to the airport and boarded an eastbound plane for Cleveland. Back at the apartment where he had left Hazel, the police were too late. I know you're wrong. There's been some terrible mistake. I'm sorry, but we have reason to believe the same man operated around here. I was responsible for the robbery of a dozen homes or more. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, here's a search warrant. Now, if there's anything here, it'd be better for you if you were to tell me about it. There's nothing here. I know you're wrong. You don't mind if I take a look around? I know you're wrong. Hal's a fine man, and we're going to be married. You'll see you're entirely wrong. We'll see. What's in here? I don't know. It's locked. I know that. Where's the key? Well, I don't know. I've never had it. Looks like I hit the jackpot. was out of reach, his whereabouts a mystery to the police. By an ironic twist, Dennis suffered his first bad break. An old Cleveland friend had an errand at police headquarters and a few minutes to kill. Hello, Kenneth. Hello, George. What's new? Oh, nothing. Only well, I want you to get me a gun permit. Afraid of being robbed? Well, there have been too many stick-ups lately. Sure, I'll get you a form to fill out. Sit down. Mm. Amuse yourself with these. What are they? Wanted signs. Who knows? You may run across some of your best friends. <laughs> I know him. I know him. What's that? This guy. I know him. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. I've gone hunting with him. He sold me a lot of jewelry. That jewelry. Like the thieves, the loafer, I bet it was hot. You know, I think that's a good bet. 
How long since you've seen him? Oh, about uh, six months ago. Well, I'll call New York. They may send someone out to question you. If you see this man again, you know what to do. Don't worry. Dennis's timing was poor. All set to do business, he set himself up. Why, hello, Mr. Moulton. Hi, beautiful. The boss in? No. No? But I expect him any minute. <laughs> he just went over to get a gun license. Well, I don't blame him. There are a lot of thieves around these days. He'll be glad to see you, too. <laughs> Why don't you wait for him in the inner office? Okay. I will. What do you think? You've decided to give me a raise. No, no, get serious. You know that Mr. Moulton, that nice-looking young fella? Well, yes, how did you know he was here? Here? Well, yes, he just got here a second ago. Are you sure? He's in your office. Hey, give me the phone. Oh, I can't. Oh, well, 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 it's you, Hal. I, I, I was wondering when you were going to be around again. <laughs> got some real fine songs for you. Ah, uh, yes, I, I'm anxious to see them. Uh, I'll be right with you, Hal. Why don't you wait in my office just a few moments? Sure, thank you. Mm. Police responded quickly to the jeweler's frantic call. Dennis, smoothly and without difficulty, was taken into custody. He was returned to Westchester, and the first stop was his apartment. He wanted to recover all the loot. Dennis was very cooperative. He offered to show us where they were hidden. Oh, Jerry. Oh, Jerry. Well, baby, you were right. I'm sorry. Dennis caught me by surprise. Even though handcuffed, his hours and training in the body gave him an edge in a foot race, to say nothing of the age handicap. I followed as fast as possible, but might have lost had he not made a wrong turn. I also got a lucky assist. He came face to face with something. Had to make a choice. I won. All right, Dennis. Take your choice, that way or this way. Thus ends the case of Gerard Graham Dennis. He is now serving a long sentence in Sing Sing. Just another thief brought to justice the way all criminals eventually are. In just a moment, another gangbuster clue about a person still at large and wanted by the police. Attention to all citizens and police. Wanted for questioning, bank robbery. Maurice Denning, 48, 5 feet 6 inches, medium build, 145 pounds, blue eyes, light brown hair, complexion ruddy, race white, nationality American. Denning, arrested and convicted at least three times, is wanted concerning several bank robberies. Denning, with aliases Harris, Wells, Bubbles, Sam, dresses neatly, has likable disposition may be working as a salesman or farmer. Repeat, Maurice Denning, wanted on charge of bank robbery. If you have any information concerning this clue, notify your local police, the FBI, or gangbusters at once. Next week, another gangbuster case taken from authentic records and files of the police. Until then, on behalf of the police, we invite you to join us. Phillips H. Lord.
The case you have heard tonight was based upon police records, court records, and personal interviews.